Hi everyone, it's Boonie. I'm going to review, I'm going to quickly read um, the beginning part of a journal from JAMA. It's a Journal of American Medical Association. It's related to screen time and development for young children. And so I just want to share it because it's great for discourse to really think about screen time in general, because all these invisible things are happening to our brains and bodies. And there's always this balance and individual, individual like context to consider when it comes to you, if you're a parent, your own circumstances, and then to really take information with a grain of salt and to use it as needed to see if you know, change needs to happen. It's up to you. But, you know, information is powerful. We just need to kind of expose ourselves to it every now and then and see what you want to do with it to see if it's right for you. Um, and sometimes a professional to offer feedback can help as well. But we don't know. We don't know. And so I'm just going to read this and you can just take it however you want. It's called Screen Time and Development, Developmental Performance Among Children Age 1 to 3 Years of Age at the Japan Environment and Children's Study. Okay. So I'm just reading this part, okay? The grayed out part, beige-ish grayed out part. Importance. It is unclear whether increased television and DVD viewing in early childhood from age one year decreases development or whether poor development increases TV, DVD viewing. See, this is so important. We don't know if it's a chicken or egg situation here. We don't know, okay? We'll never know, really. Um, we're just guessing. To investigate, the objective is to investigate the directional association between TV, DVD screen time, and performance on developmental screeners in children aged one to three years. Design, setting, and participants. This longitudinal cohort study analyzed data from 57,980 children and mothers from a national birth cohort, the Japan Environment, and Children's Study. Data were collected in collaboration with 15 regional centers across Japan. The mothers were recruited between January 2011 and March 2014. Analyses using random intercept cross-lagged panel models were performed for children ages 1, 2, and 3 years of 100, 303, is that? Of 100,303 live births, children were missing developmental. Hmm? Children were missing developmental screening test scores and screen time data. Those with congenital diseases or cerebral palsy and those diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder were excluded. So this is not including autism. That's interesting. Um, statistical analyses were conducted from October 2022 to July 2023. So this is like data collected over time. And then years later, they analyzed it. That is so interesting. Okay. So exposed to exposures to TV and DVD screen time. Main outcomes and measures. Child development at ages one, two, and three years was assessed via the mother's or guardian's report using the ages and stages questionnaire, third edition. Results of 57,980 57, included children, 29,418, 50.7% were male, and the mean standard deviation maternal age at delivery was 31.5 years old with 4.9 years. A negative association between screen time and developmental scores was observed. Increased TV DVD screen times at age one and two years was associated with lower developmental scores at age two and three years, respectively. Two years. And all these numbers, I don't know what they mean. An adverse association was observed from the ages of and stages questionnaire, third edition score in the communication domain at age one and two years to subsequent screen time. Two years, y equals negative 0 0.03, 95%. Okay, I don't know these. what these mean. Um, anyone who's good with statistics, please, I welcome you and invite you to please explain what those letters mean. Conclusions and relevance. In this study, increased TV, DVD screen time from age one year negatively affected later development. To reduce the negative consequences of excessive media use, researchers and healthcare professionals should encourage family media management and recommend social support for parents who tend to rely on the media. Okay, this is kind of loaded and I know people who are parents will get defensive because it's normalized to use screen time to 
do what you need to do to kind of cre- clean the house, have personal time. You're exhausted as a parent. Um, it's hard. That's all I can really say. And so the first thing to really dissect this information is a lot of things where we don't feel defensive. That's the first part. Like, I understand where parents are coming from. I understand where educators and researchers are coming from, too, because let's talk about the long-term effects here. If your children are one or two years behind in language development or communication when they're not autistic, okay, they're saying this is not autistic kids. So there's a language not being developed because you're not talking to the kids. Like, that's what easily what I could pick up. Like, if you're having your, you know, the thing, you know, DVDs and media babysit your kids because you got to get stuff done that is understandable at the same time you're not talking to your kids so their language development is not growing and that was something like one of the first things that kind of stood out to me when I was studying child development back in my ancient days you know like my first profession really was being a preschool teacher and so I learned about child development human development and language acquisition was a big one for me because that was something that my instructors preached about like they pushed it because we don't talk enough to our kids. What we did was we tended to tell them what to do. We told them no. We berated them when they were doing something wrong to yell at them. Just constantly direction instead of actually having engaging conversations with children. And that was like the biggest difference that they were trying to explain between. So it was social socioeconomic class differences too. People who were busy working all the time came from a possible mindset of like, I need to control the kids. I need to tell them what to do because I need to get my work done. I, I'm I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't have any bandwidth left to do anything else. So again, understandable. At the same time, we're perpetuating these things where a lot of kids get lost in the cracks where they're 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 lagging behind, and the lagging behind accumulates every year over and over until there's a big gap. Does that make sense? And so again, as a school counselor, I've seen this where. Most of the kids who came to me for counseling, there's nothing wrong with them. They were struggling academically because there was no support at home. And I'm not blaming parents. I'm not wagging my finger here. I'm saying it's a systemic issue. Parents don't have time to help their kids with homework. Parents don't have time to read to their kids and teach them how to pronounce certain words or look up the meaning of words because they're busy working. Like it's a systemic issue. What I'm saying is there's something to kind of like reframe. What can you do to start promoting conversation with your kids? What can you do to try like the five minutes? I know it's super hard. I'm not denying that. Again, the the last thing I would ever do is try to deny someone's lived experience and the challenges of having a child. But when it comes to promoting like the development of your child now, because again, this is your, it wasn't your choice or it was your choice. You have a kid now, you have a little life you're responsible for it's not enough just to feed them and house them. You got to set them up for success. This is me talking as a school counselor now. We got to set these kids up for success, you know, like um, you got to use the language. So some of that involves showing them how to organize time and space. Is their room organized? Are you just yelling at them because their room is a mess because they're kids and they don't know about future orientation and keeping things organized? So you got to instill that right that's that's your job as an adult you know we got we got to do baby steps and we can't just fall apart and yell at them all the time and without explaining why these things are important because sometimes it gets lost in translation we think that our kids are actually older than they actually are like their lived experience is not the same as ours as adults we forget that it's like how do you understand how do you not remember this i told you a million times you know and so anyways that's just me rambling it's just like When I think about the screen time and I think about these studies being done, this was the data was collected 10 more than 10 years ago. Imagine what the data would look like now. You know, I'm sure they would be so dumbfounded, like, oh, all the kids are developmentally behind. So does that mean it's a generational shift? Does that mean that society is evolving in a certain way where we're instead of communicating with words and language, we're communicating through memes? communicating through like weird gestures and the viral stuff that happens and TikTok dances like it's different you know and difference not always bad but sometimes difference is always perceived as bad and so we need to also as adults reframe what we think how we perceive this stuff of the change right and so if we're perceiving something as bad and we're treating our kids as bad 
they're going to internalize that and they're going to think that there's something wrong with them. But there's nothing wrong with the kids. Uh, again, it's a systemic problem. How are we going to address it? And again, I, I bring this stuff up because I don't have the answers for everything. But in my head, ideally, like I mentioned in another video, we could just assess the kids to see how they learn. And then we pair them with the teachers that actually teach the way that they learn. And then boom, problem solved, right? Oh my God, that'd be so easy. But it's actually, I don't know why it's so hard. I don't know why it's so hard to like, it's just a mismatch. Like a personality doesn't fit. It's like dating. It's like a doctor. You go to the doctor and like, oh, I don't like that doctor. I'm gonna go to a different doctor. It's like going to a therapist. Therapist wasn't good fit. And I go to a different therapist, like a coach. I'm not a good fit for everyone. I know that. Like I'm good fit for very sensitive people, very creative thinkers. If you think very concretely, like you're not going to work well with me. Like I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like it's like working, to, it's working too hard. I'll recommend you to someone else. I'll find someone else for you. So it's, I, I just wish we could do that with education, but I don't know why it hasn't been done. Like it's not too novel to think that, oh, right. Just like in the workspace, people are good at different things. If we tap into the strengths of our students and tap into the strengths in the way our teachers teach and just pair them accordingly, that would make a world of difference. Problem solved, right? I don't know. I am just rambling now because we can't fix education with all the money that we have in this world. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this information. And then um, if you find uh, updated studies, uh, new data samples, or if you want to help translate the letters, I have no clue what they mean, please put them in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. And thanks for watching, everyone.